Trouble feeling my phone's on. Can you reach any? Oh, the cups. Okay. Have you got them? Yeah. Oh, do you think they're fair? No. Okay, there's some more for you. Can you just lift it? Just turn it off. It might be in the flat. Just as long as it's not on. Second, if you don't mind.
Place where he passed away. I pay my respects to all the Aranda and Wampum elders, past, present, and emerging, and to all Aboriginal people sitting in court today or who are following these proceedings from other locations. <laughs> Alice Springs, Fabian, Regan, very well. Why are you here? Young, poor, young, young, but tell her we didn't have ready. My brother, you're a media, but you want free water. Tradition alone, you're promoting it. We can walk on the world. My car, young, 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 my young respect for the young, you are not a part of it. My work for the elders part of it. You don't want to tell them what I'm not going to do. My brother, you know, you respect me. You have a part of it. 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 At the start of this inquest, I ask myself this question. Do I know the story of Queen Jay Walker and Constable Blackley Roll? Do you? Now, for you, first up, very easy to go now. Now, for you. We have to get up and up for me and Walker. Mono Constable Blackley Roll. I expect that many will have followed media reporting of the trial of Constable Rock and of his acquittal. Some may have listened to podcasts about the events and the trial or watched interviews with Constable Rock and his family. Many will have seen Constable Rock and other police officers on board media and will have all the images. And sounds for shots in the Constable Ralph Cramo, family and no other. Manuele Nyonga, Constable Ralph, Cabi Priest House of Sabaro, whatever you are, what you get here, Nyonga Nyonga, video camera, whatever you call them, a murder. Yelling in a kind of media mini picture, Yelling one good, Mano, whatever. Mula mungkin itu di luar tu perayaan tu, dia ada video orang. Some might recall that a few days earlier, two other police also attempted to arrest Kumanjay. Their body worn video shows Kumanjay threatening them with an axe. Both officers backed away, and Kumanjay escaped. Kalau kau itu kalau Media pini, jadi kamera orang, kalau cerita macam itu, policeman, jangan, jangan semua jangan pun dia, jangan 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 video, kita berkata macam mana, jangan 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 buat panjang. 
you might wonder whether there is anything more to say. <coughs> During this inquest, I'm inviting everyone to look a little deeper and listen a little longer because I think there is more to learn from and more need to try and understand about the story. On the day Kuma Jay passed away, there was a funeral for a family member in the area. I asked the funeral when some was <coughs> Some family members gathered at the front of their houses and were very close to each other. Perhaps they were grieving, vulnerable, and thinking and talking about the funeral or about the man that passed away. In those circumstances, I wonder how it looked and felt when the police arrived. What did it sound and feel like when they heard those three gunshots? We haven't seen Colin Warren video from the family, and of course he never will because it doesn't exist. But just as it is of great significance to watch that first video, isn't it also important to hear from the family sitting outside to hear their perspective? Who knows? They might have something very important to say. Maybe there is something we can do. After he was shot, Kum and Jay was dragged past his family and taken to the police station. The, the police and Kum and Jay were locked inside and the family and wider community members were locked outside. 
perhaps you recall the scenes from body worn video and CCTV from inside the police station. Maybe you recall the scene of the Walt and other police trying to assist Tommy Jack. But what about the people outside? We don't have the benefit of body worn video or CCTV from their perspective. But we do know that they were all prevented from being in Tommy Jack as he passed away. Mulia, <laughs> Only one video, one CCTV, and the police station one. Madam Banyan, first of all, one police officer, half of my job, police station. But one of the one of the one of the one of the one of Sorry, Your Honour, could you move closer to the microphone? They're having some trouble hearing you on the live stream. <laughs> During the training, I'm sorry. Many of his experienced a family member passing away in circumstances where we were unable to be with them during their last days and hours. While we largely accepted that there were good reasons for family members to be excluded, we nonetheless listen to stories from some of those affected families. Through those stories, we try to understand the additional pain and suffering from those, those families experience because of their exclusion. With greater knowledge and understanding, we considered and debated the strengths and weaknesses, the costs and benefits, the safety measures that were adopted. We also empathise. As a nation, we allow ourselves <coughs> to feel the loss. Pandemic for you. One of the family, family member, one of the one of the other, two of the other, two of Sorry, 
while I appreciate the circumstances are very different, in order to understand this story, I must seek to understand why the police station is there to be And if true, I should also do from the person to the lot outside the police station that night to try and understand these events from their perspective. Maybe there is something important that you can best learn from me. Yeah, <laughs> What does policing look like in New Guinea? Are there examples of policing where the risk of this kind of confrontation can be minimised or even avoided altogether? Perhaps the community or local police or expert witnesses can help us understand what that might look like and how that might work. We know from the trial verdict that Constable Rolf was not guilty of any crime when he fired his Glock pistol. We also know that a few days earlier, when two police officers were threatened with an axe, those officers backed away. They did not use any force at all and no one got hurt. On any given day in the Northern Territory, police officers find themselves in situations where they might be, and indeed are, confronted, confronted and threatened by an armed person or persons. In each case, the officer on the ground has to decide, perhaps in a split second, how to respond. In each case, there is likely to be a range of possible responses. De-escalation, no or minimal force, and potentially up to and including lethal force. Out of a wide range of possible choices, how is an officer to make the best and most appropriate choice? What are the Northern Territory Police guidelines on risk and use of force? What is the training? Are the guidelines and training adequate and sufficient to ensure police are equipped to make good choices in high-risk situations? Should they be improved to prevent similar deaths in the future? If so, what should they be?
They are sitting court with eminent senior and junior counsel and their instructing solicitors who are here from around the country and who are representing the various parties affected by this death or who have a sufficient interest <coughs> to provide their expertise to ensure that I examine all the relevant matters concerning this death. I make findings, comments, I thank them in advance for what I anticipate, anticipate to be their vital contributions to the functions I must fulfil. I thank my council assisting team, Dr Peggy Dwyer, Mr Patrick Coleridge and Ms Maria Walls for extensively engaging with the parties, the family, the community and the investigating police to ensure all the relevant evidence is gathered and presented during this inquest and for the hard work that they will continue to do. I thank the Aboriginal Interpreting Service for their expertise and for their assistance in making this an inclusive process. I acknowledge the cooperation received from the Northern Territory Police Force the Department of Health, the Community Justice Centre, other government and non-government <coughs> services and Aboriginal organisations have all worked and are still working to provide significant information to this inquest. 
I have a lot to learn from all the witnesses who will be called in this inquest and I will listen carefully to what each has to say. I now invite informal statements from the elders and community of Kumujai Walker. <coughs>
Your Honour, the first member of the community to give an informal um, talk to Your Honour <coughs> is Mr Ned Hargraves, respected elder who lives <coughs> in Yundamu. Uh, first of all, I'd like to... <coughs> um, sorry, who I am? Uh, look, my name is Ned Hargraves, Jambagitma, from Yundamu. I'm a worldly man. And... Um, yeah, um, I'll do my best to give my information and, um, and also you as your honor um, can correct me or if there's any, any possible way that if there's something misunderstanding then I can, I as well, my assistance. Is that okay? That's absolutely okay and thank you for being here today. I must say, um, I'm a lad man. <laughs> I'm a lad man and um, you, won't, you won't miss a word. So, <laughs> um, so are you. Please excuse me. Um, At the very beginning, at the beginning, we are, we are the Waimala. We are the warriors, warrior clan warriors. We uphold the stories, the Chukurpa. When I say Chukurpa, it's lived on stories. That's um, that's what I mean. And we looked af look after our kids. How good are How kids? Very long time ago, in the early sixties and fifties and forties and seventies, forties, our people. Our beloved were moved to settlements, as we call now the communities. The communities. We were we were brought there. Our people were brought there, but they haven't. They have not. <coughs> Had a guns. All they had was spears and boomerangs and none of others. Our elders worked very, very hard. They sweat. And they were as a slave, as right from the beginning, as a right from the go. They were slaves. We could not escape. They could not escape. They worked for, you know what they worked for? Flour, tea, sugar, tobacco. That is the only things that they would ever get what they earned and what they worked for. Some Gurias, when I say Gurias, white people, would ask for more. Hey, come on, I can't be working for this tea, sugar, flour. But our people have suffered. They've been strong with us. And we know it. Because most of us have learnt and seen 
what we, what they been gone through, what they've gone through. And right from today, we still have those memories, the trauma. <clears throat> But we never, our people, our Warmarla, when I say Warmarla, it's a nation of Warbury warriors. We are strong in our laws. We are strong in our culture. And even today, we still continue teaching our children. We have not lost our culture. Warbri, Warmarla warrior, Warmarla. We are still here, strong. Your Honor, if I'm too loud, you just tell me. No. Very happy to hear from you, Mr. Thank Hart. you very much. But never, never, ever was afraid. Was afraid. Our Warmala, Walpri, weren't afraid of guardians, what they were doing. When I say Gurdia, white. People, white people. Our children today, they learnt. And we have told, and they have told us that this, what had happened to us? This, what had happened to us? But the thing is, in everything in our culture, system, our ways of dealing with, with problems, we did it <coughs> in our way. Never used a gun, because we didn't know what it was. But it was a danger thing. It was a danger. Our problem, guns, we were afraid. Our people were afraid of using it. Because a lot of our, our countrymen, our fellow countrymen, were afraid. Want to go there. But they knew how to deal with it. Not with a gun, not with a shotgun, not with a machine gun, but within a culture. We've decided, our people decided to, all right, this is what we got to live with. In the settlements they used to call it, now we call it the community. We call it Mora, home. Mora, home. Because that's where we belong to. That's where our culture is. And we want to continue teaching our children, our future children, to be strong and to keep our culture alive. We never knew, our people never, never, ever, ever knew that they would
come into a thing like this. Oh, to resolve problems in a inappropriate, in a not an appropriate ways. Every and each and one of them, every one of them, add protocols. For example, my young sister passed away. A man had done something very, very bad. He passed away. She passed away. But the man had to pay the punishment. He was in this situation that he cannot say, no, I can't do that, I can't do that. Hey, hey, I'm going to need, you know, white man, come here, to help me out. No. The problem was, and the answer was this. What I've done, I've got to go through. I've got to face the problem. We call that, at that moment, we call it, Barumburu. Barumburu. And I'll give you the answer for that one. It means justice. Justice. In our culture, Barumburu is the answer. It was the answer. It was the only answer. When that was done, and the spear at, at the soldier. He had to get a spear. Cross the legs. Not one, not two times. Ten. When the blood was sown, Then the family, the community, that was the sign of peace. It was a sign for Karanjala Mojari. It was a sign, Karanjala Mojari meaning ceasefire. It was meaning, end is a story. It's back to you and me, family, living, loving, caring, sharing. Doing the things that, the, that our people taught us to, cult, to keep that culture very strong. That was Barumburu. That was Barumburu. That was the justice. It wasn't a gun to solve the problem. It wasn't a, a shotgun to solve the problem. It was a spear across the legs. That was the problem. That was the answer. We cannot argue with that. We could not argue with that. Nobody in our culture would not argue. But there were family members. There are family members like mother-in-laws and father-in-laws. We have a protocol. A protocol saying this. If this one was a Napananga, if this one was a Napurula, a skin name, to me, I would say, I would call, call it Makundawang. Makundawang meaning something very, very, 
very deeply respected. In that protocol, I cannot fight with someone who is a who is a Makunda. I cannot disrespect he or her in that system. Because that system tells us to love one another, what love one another. It tells us to keep our culture strong and to respect it. You know the story, each and every one of us, we know the story that when Robert Jesus was on the cross, what did they see? They saw the blood when they speared it. And that meant it is finished. It is finished. That's what Parambur is. Not a gun problem, not a gun solve, not a shotgun. No. It was a spear and a blood that was shed. Just, uh, it's, uh, it's, uh, oh, sorry, Your, Your Honor, just asking. Is the one she was Ah, uh, yes, she is. Uh, Belda. She is? Yeah. She's Oh, I Yeah. And I'm uh, Your Honor, which is comparing something, um, what to say, how to say. When young Komaja Walker was shot, I'm a wonder, meaning I'm a uncle. I said earlier about deep respect with Makunda. Deep respect. He was a he was a wonder to me, and I called him Wondering because family lines. I say that because I share something very vulnerable, very something very special with him. He was a wonder, a loving wonder. Someone very special. It is important to understand each and every one of us today to have someone like him who is very special. I, I want to say that uh, within culture, we have these protocols that we must not disobey. We 
do not, must not disrespect it. Because it keeps us in line. Korea people in line, what it means to them. Korea, white people, what it means to them. To see someone, to see someone, ah, it's just another guy. Or it's just someone. Not very special. But for Yapa, for Aka, in our culture, Yapa, it means very, very deeply to respect someone. Put up the Venonga because. The punishment, the things that we want in the community, the things that we want to replace. <coughs> we want the police. We love the police. We like the police because they help hold the law. We want them there. We want to be able to work together. We want to teach, not because Korea policemen are always right, but I must say, <coughs> some of them are stupid. They don't want to listen to you and me. But we, somewhere along the line, we've got to find that answer. We must work together to make it a community that is safe for our children to, to live. That night, there were a lot, there were a lot bang, everybody was at funeral. There's a lot bang of the gun. We had to gather all our children and to protect them. Then later, we went to the station, to the police station, and to be there. And we asked a question of saying, is he alive? Is he alive? One girl might, meaning, is he alive? There was no light. There was no answer. There was an answer. The lights were off. We were terrified. The whole community was shattered. We were shattered. Completely terrified. Seventeen eighty eight. There were a lot of killing. Over in the east. That's where it all started. And that's where it hit. Then it continued. Nineteen twenty eight. The massacre broke out. Killing. 70, yeah, 70 men and women and children. Where this man came from? Two. One, he was an soldier, George Murray. Then became a policeman. You know the story. Second, Sakai Rav was in the army and got a police job. The thing, it's lies. Your Honor, 
excuse me. This must be Karanjana Mohajari. I'll say it again. This must be Karanjana Mohajari. Meaning, cease fire, no more. No more. It is finished. I want to say thank you so much, Your Honor, for listening to me. And I hope I made, a, I made sense. You made a lot of sense. I've got a lot to learn, but understanding the two different perspectives, understanding the two very different stories and history, that is extremely important. And your goal to work together to make the community a safe place for our children. We all share that goal. Your Honour, one last thing. There should be not, there should be no, no guns in the remote communities. There should be no guns, period, no guns. Please take notice. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yes, please. Yes, please. Sorry, sorry. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm wrong, Where I was sitting next to Phil, and I'll just sit beside you. That's all right. That's okay. All right, um, may I now introduce another very respected elder, Mr. Robin Granitz. And it's welcome. Hi. Before I start, I would like to thank all of the people of Mbada, Hell Springs and the Larrakia people of Darwin for hosting us on their country during these difficult times. We say thank you. My name is Robin Chapananga Granitz. I am a senior Warbury Helder and I speak on behalf of Warbury people, on behalf of Yundamu, behalf of the family of Kumanjay Walker and on behalf of the Paramburu community, committee who is the party of this coronial inquest into the test of Kumanjay Walker. 
We are here to speak the truth. We have always spoken the truth because we all we have is our truth. We do not want you to tell us what we need and what we want. We will tell you what we want. We know the difference between asking and telling. We need to dig deep to let Australia know our young Barbary man lost his life. This is why this inquest is so important. The, the pain we feel is real. And the past has led us here. We feel and it's real for us to move forward, we cannot be another injustice. We know what's best for Walbury people. We witness what happened to Kumanjay. Our parents, great parents, when witnessed the last state sanctioned massacre of Aboriginal people in Australia. <coughs> Let's have the courage to answer these qu serious questions about how Kumanjay passed. We have nothing to hide. All we have is our truth. For those of you who are here attending this coronial inquest, did you know who Common Day Walker was? Komanjai was a quiet young man who his family loved, loved by his community, his people. But since the shooting, <coughs> he has been blamed for his death. This Coronial inquest to a Korea, that's non indigenous people, is another step towards understanding what happened. To us, Yaba, that's our indigenous, this is also our life. The impact of the violence was inflicted in our home <clears throat> by seeing a young 19 year old family member shot down by a police officer in his own home in front of his family in his community and captured on a camera for the world to see. <clears throat> there were no medical services or support, no communication or help. We would never be able to understand the feeling of hopelessness, fear and hurt that we carry. 
<coughs> because of this uh, injustice, where a young man has lost his life. We fight for Kumanje and we will never stop fighting for justice. Not only because of our love for Kumanje, but for the love young people in our communities who deserve to live a free life free of fear. No one deserves to tie this way and Australia cannot allow it to happen again, for this to happen again. The shooting is caught on camera for the world to see. But this police officer has walked away free from the hands of Australian justice system. It's been three years, but it felt as though it happened only yesterday. We won't see Kumanje again in his lifetime. But what has this policeman lost? Some me media labelled him a hero while calling Kumanje a criminal. <clears throat> Just months after his acquittal, the policeman returned to the Northern Territory Police Force. For Yapa, this is not fair. Parambur in our language means justice. The Parambur committee comprises of elders, Kumanjai's family members, the community. We represent our people and we represent Kumanjai Walker. This cannot be the moment in time for the papers to be left unread. Recommendation cannot be ignored. This is, about, this is about change. For this change to happen, we need to be part of the outcome. We need to lead them. For we know what's best for our community and our people. This is Aranda country. It belongs to Aranda people. We are all kids here on their land. What we need and what we want is for the coroner to come out and sit with Walbury elders and talk to us. We invite you to Tanama Desert in Walbury country to be part of our culture and law. We hope you accept our invitation and listen to what we have to say. Thank you. I also hope that there is a future for a community where everyone can live without feeling so fear. And I hope that will be your community.
these are theories and books. I'm very much appreciate the invitation and um, we definitely uh, work towards finding a way that we can accept that invitation every time we can write more commitments. Our suggestion is if we can have it the soon it with the better. Thank you. <laughs> would, you, would you want to excuse my back? Your Honour, might I now introduce Samara Fernandez-Brown. She's a young leader in the community um, and a very beautiful spokesperson, if I may say, and she's going to come up now. Thank you. Ms Fernandez-Brown, would you like to sit or would you like to stand at the lectern? What was that, sorry? Would you like to sit or would you like to stand at the lectern? I'll sit there. Okay. Before I start, I would like to acknowledge and pay my respects to the Adunda people who plan to leave Adunda today for the next three months. Thank you for letting us be here. I would also like to acknowledge my people, the Walker people, for their undeniable strength and love. I acknowledge the Lyrature people, who are also from Jay's family. And I extend that acknowledgement to all Indigenous people. I'd also like to send my condolences and love to all other Indigenous and Aboriginal people who have had their hearts broken by family loss the same way we have. <coughs> Finally, I would like to acknowledge Bunjo. You're a big team. Yeah. At the inquest into the death of Gumin Joe Walker. But we shouldn't be here. At the death at the inquest and the death of Gumin Joe Walker. On the night of the 9th of November, I was in Yundamu. I was amongst my family and, and community when Gumin Joe was shot. And I was there the morning we found out he had died. The wails of my family's cries still haunt me. The images of devastation, the pain, and most importantly, the fear. In the dark, we waited. Pleaded for answers and begged for the smallest amount of information. And we got nothing. Kuminjay died in Yundamu that night. He was 19 years old. I'd imagine he was in pain. He was scared and he was robbed of comfort. His family gathered only metres away from him, yet we were all robbed of the opportunity to say goodbye. I can't imagine any circumstance where this is acceptable are excusable. You would think this was the worst of it, but we continue to suffer. 
We have had to watch as Gumanja gets picked apart and ridiculed by those who don't know him. Those that didn't know his love for animals, his love for music, his love for candy. Those who had memories with him. Memories that are both a blessing to cherish, but also an anguish to remember. Knowing that they are all we have left of him. As a community, we have only ever sought justice. Justice for Walker. Throughout heartbreak, we have complied. We have been respectful and we stayed graceful. Yes. We still suffer. By the time we finish here, it will be three years since he was taken from us. And up until this point, we are still yet to hear the truth. Guminja is gone. He cannot be brought back. That is something we are learning to live with. The trauma of losing him. The ways our lives have been impacted is unimaginable. We cannot begin to understand how deeply his loss sits in our bodies, how it tears our spirits apart, and how it will stay in our country for generations to come. So we ask you, Give us the truth, not a sample of the truth or what you want us to hear. Let our minds be free of wonder. We are owed that much. Work with us, work for us, to ensure no other family experiences what we have. We are past the point of asking for change. We have an opportunity before us to action change, to forge a better way. We have an obligation, a responsibility. Listen to our truths, not just what you want to hear, not just those parts that are palatable. Open your minds and open your hearts to us. Feel our loss and feel the urgency that we feel to change the conditions of this country. Very much impressed by your courage and your willingness to consider these matters so briefly.
The running order, folks. Oh, we're going to take.